Welcome to the Daily Race. Oh man, I am glad that you are here today. I'm glad that, that you're up and, and getting the day started, whether you're doing it live with me early or catching it at some point. The point is that, that you have decided today to take a few moments, a little bit of time, and use that to, to take a step with Jesus, to take and spend some time with God as you um, just want to know him more, learn more about him, and apply his word to our lives. I'm, I'm thrilled that you're doing that. After a super busy weekend uh, with everything we did at, at church and at family events and, and all of that, it was an incredible Easter uh, that we got a chance to, to celebrate. Well, we're in the book of Acts now, starting the story of the church. <laughs> I entitled today, The Birth of the Church. The Birth of the Church. So what? Wh why is this the birth of the church? Well, we're going to read how this is, uh, this is as it went from a group of believers that had been following Jesus that were huddled into this upper room waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit to a, a mobilized group of believers uh, who are now carrying out the mission of Jesus. So let's read what, what takes place here. So they're waiting for the Holy Spirit. It says, on the day of Pentecost, um, all the believers were meeting together in one place. So all of them, there's about 120. So think about that for a second. Of the thousands of people that Jesus had preached to over his his ministry career. There's, there's 120 that, that, that got it. 120 uh, that, that after it all are, are, are committed to gathering together, praying, waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. <clears throat> At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. So there's a, a bunch of believers, a bunch of Jewish believers from all over the world there in Jerusalem. Why? The temple. The temple's in Jerusalem. So even if you have moved away, and there's lots of reasons to move away from Jerusalem over the years. There was captivity times, there was different invasions, so Jewish people are spread throughout the north, as far as Rome and Alexandria down to Egypt, but they come to the temple to worship, specifically this time of year. If you're going to make a pilgrimage, if you're going to do it once or twice in your life, you're going to come around Passover time. So Passover was uh, weeks before this. These aren't turnaround trips if you're going that far, so you're, you're making a stay there. So there's people there from all over. And these, these followers of Jesus now go out and start speaking to them in their own language. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are from Galilee, yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. And it goes through all the different regions there, just tons of different places. Uh, but there were other people in the crowd that ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. <laughs> I haven't been around a ton of drunk people, but I've never been around a drunk person that all of a sudden starts speaking a foreign language, a language they didn't know before. Like, that's that's not a, I don't, a typical sign of drunkenness. You, you might, I might be wrong, but it's it, that's typically not it. Then Peter stepped forward with 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heaven above and the signs of the earth below, blood and fire and clouds and smoke. The sun will become dark, that sounds familiar, uh, and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives, when everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Then goes on and says that that day, 3,000 people got saved and were baptized. The birth of the church. And there's a couple really cool things here to, to, to point out. So this message is being taken out. Who are the ones that are doing it? It goes right back to this prophecy of Joel. What did it say? It's your sons and your daughters. So men and women. Young men will see visions, old men will dream dreams. Young and old, men and women. Everybody, everybody's going to be part of this, the church. 
everyone's going to have a role to play. It says they will, they will prophesy. It means they will, they will speak the truth about Jesus. In this very public setting, you have, you have men, you have women, you have older people, you have younger people, all empowered by the Holy Spirit, not because they're, they're so special or because they're so smart, because God is working through them. The Holy Spirit is empowering them to preach and to share the good news message of Jesus. And the result are people are getting saved. People are coming to faith. All because of what God is doing and how God is at work. It's the result of the, of the Holy Spirit. And it's it's moving this church. This church is born. The, the church is born in, in this moment here. With the coming of the Holy Spirit, with the gathering of believers. And then as it continues on here, it talks about what these new believers start doing. They start gathering together in each other's homes daily. Relationships are key. There, there's this common bond of fellowship among these new believers. They're worshiping God and they're praying. And they're serving one another to making sure that everyone's needs are, are taken care of. And they're sharing this good news with others. It says every day God's adding to their number those who are being saved. And they're listening to the apostles' teaching and they're growing in their relationship with God. All these fundamental marks of, of what we do here today. We worship, we fellowship, we serve, uh, we grow in our relationship with God, we share our faith with others. These same five principles that we do here today are what were birthed on this very first day of the church. This is what we're called to do. This is what the Holy Spirit empowers us to do. Both men and women, young and old, everyone. Everyone is part of this plan. There, there's no exclusions to this from this very very first day. God empowers everyone, all of his sons and daughters, to be part of his amazing body, the church, and to complete the mission that he laid out for. So as we get started today, you are part of this movement. We are here today. We're here today because of these very first followers, these very first 120 people that went out into the crowds and started preaching the gospel. And people of all different languages heard that message and then went back home. And they told someone, that told some, someone that, that told another person that passed that faith on to their next generation, to their children and their grandchildren. And, and maybe someone at some point got in a boat and, and went across the sea and, and told someone else about that. And over and over and over again, for hundreds of years, almost 2,000 years later, here we are. Because the message spreads through men and women, young and old, who are empowered by the Holy Spirit to carry out the mission of Jesus to live as a gathered church to the body of believers and do what Jesus has called us to do. That is the legacy we stand on. And that is the, the lineage of where we come from. The church is God's beautiful bride. It's spread out over the, all over the world in so many beautiful forms. The same Jesus, the same Lord, but we have different cultures and traditions. We have beautiful music that's brought, been brought in from all over the world to, to celebrate and worship God. There's different ways that we gather together and do fellowship, but it's all based on the principle that Jesus came down here to earth, that he rescued mankind from their sins, that he is the only way to heaven, and that we need to gather together to worship him, to grow, to serve one another, to serve the community, and share that message with other people. That's the marching orders for today. Maybe not all of that at once, <laughs> but being aware that this is what we're called to do. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's pray. This is a jam-packed chapter. I mean, a lot of stuff happens here in this one, one chapter here in Acts chapter 2. So if, you're, if you want to read through it again, maybe a little slower, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, maybe on your Bible app, listen to it. Uh, just that whole chapter there is, is you're driving into uh, to work or maybe you're, you're, you're hanging out around your house. What a great action-filled chapter, the birth of the church. So much stuff is happening there. But don't worry if you didn't catch it all here today because we're going to see this put into practice over the next dozens of chapters here in the book of Acts. Let's pray. Now, Heavenly Father, we, we thank you so much that, that you... When you came down, when you gave up your life for us, you did not abandon us. You did not leave us here on our own, God. You gave us the Holy Spirit, that you are present here with us. You, you take it up residence inside us. And God, when we think about just everything we learned in Exodus and dwelling in the temple, God, that, that we, our bodies are the temple now of, of your Holy Spirit, that you take up residence inside us. So God, as we step into today, God, we do so with, uh, with expectation, uh, with gratitude. And God, we just pray that you would just, just use us today 
Help us to take one next right step in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. Look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.